Did you guys know that Oregon has a desert? Like a legit desert. I didn't know that. It's camping season again, and I'm so excited to be back at it, back enjoying the great outdoors. And right now I am sitting literally on a giant desert flat in Eastern Oregon. I have my camp set up back there with two chairs because something that crossed my mind last summer, when I was camping by myself, I was falling asleep one night and I realized I only had one chair at my camp. And if somebody was coming by looking to mess with somebody, it's really obvious there's only one person at the camp if there's only one chair. So I made a mental note that I need to start bringing multiple chairs. I was even thinking like I could bring a dog bowl and a dog leash. Like you can set whatever you want around your camp to make it look like there's more people there. So safety tip, if you are nervous about camping by yourself, that's something you can do. This is definitely the most vast surface I've ever driven on. It's actually really fun. There's something about the grip of the clay. It just like your car moves like butter on it. It's really interesting. But something you have to be careful about if you do come camp here is this desert is known for crazy driving. Like people will come down here, especially to drive at night to like race their cars 100 miles an hour or something. So if you do come here, they recommend to camp along the outer edges of the desert. Like you don't want to go park right in the middle in the middle of the night and then, you know, have someone hit you. So here's my setup for the night. I was going to put up my awning, but I unrolled it and it's kind of windy. Like there are big wind gusts that come through here and I heard that it gets even windier at night and the sun is kind of on its way down. So I decided to leave it rolled up. And then the biggest change with my setup for this trip is I'm trying out a rooftop tent. This is actually what sparked all of my interest in the SUV camping stuff last summer is I'd seen a photo of this on like Instagram or something and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I looked into buying one, but I wasn't really sure because they are a really big investment and I kind of waited around on it and then and by the middle of July, they were sold out everywhere last year. Everyone was buying rooftop tents last summer. So that's when I started looking into like the SUV camper builds and things like that. So I'm excited to finally try one of these out. So Roof Nest very kindly sent me their Falcon tent to try out. This is actually the tent that I was looking at last summer. So I'm super excited about it. So I thought in this video, I would give you guys just an overview of the tent, kind of my first impressions, because I haven't been camping with it for a whole season. So talk about pros, cons, who I think this tent is for. And then maybe if you are where I was last summer, if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to invest in one of these, maybe I can help direct you one way or the other. And the thing that interested me most about these hard shell rooftop tents to begin with is they are so convenient. To set up this tent, you literally just lift the latches, push up a little bit, and then it has hydraulics that pop the tent up the rest of the way. And you can see there's a black elastic band around the tent. That's to help suck all the material in when you pull it closed. So you just pull that band down around the base and then you grab your awning poles and loop them through the awning and your tent is completely completely set up. It's that fast and it's that easy to close the tent as well. As somebody who camps by themselves, I really liked the idea of not having a lot of like setup or breakdown time. I could roll into somewhere pretty close to dark and it's 60 seconds to get my tent set up. It comes with a telescoping ladder as well as it came with like a sand mat for your feet. So I've just pinned that under there. So I have somewhere to like take my shoes off and stuff to climb up and you can install the ladder hooks anywhere on the tent. So if you want to climb up through a different opening, that's really easy to do as well. You just get to choose where you want to put them. And then something else that's really cool is the entire footprint of the tent is a foam mattress. And having the tent on top of your car makes it super handy because you don't have to go around and try to find a flat place on the ground to pitch a tent. Like anywhere that's level that you can park your car, you've got your tent ready to go. And then there's a net in here that you could put like a jacket or something up in. And then there's also a light strip up here with a USB cord that you could plug into like a portable battery charger and that will light that up. And then something else that really stood out to me about this tent. It's why I was looking at this specific tent last summer. This one has channels all the way around the side, like these accessory channels that you can mount accessories to. So like my awning is now mounted to the tent itself. And I feel like there's so much cool stuff you could do with that. Like you could mount a light bar so that you 
you have light at your camp. Like there's just so many accessories now for these types of setups that I thought that that was really unique and useful. So those are the pros. It's incredibly convenient and it's also just a really cool camping experience to be like lofted up on top of your car. As far as cons go, I haven't found a lot and I know that that's something that you usually find over time, but just kind of first impression cons. Number one is the cost and that's not just for this tent, that's for every rooftop tent. You will pay multiple, multiple, multiple times over for a rooftop tent than a ground tent. So this is definitely for somebody who really plans to get some use out of it. And kind of along with that, another thing to consider is, well, okay, the installation of this tent on the roof is so simple. It is a breeze. You literally just set the tent on top of your roof rack and then there are these brackets that you screw on underneath and the tent's on. Like it is so simple. It's not like a whole bunch of parts and instructions. The only thing that's tricky about installing the tent is it weighs 140 pounds. So you definitely need two or three people to overhead press this thing onto your car and then obviously once you get it on there you're not going to be taking it on and off all the time it's the kind of thing that you put on and leave on for at least a whole season so if you're the type of person who's like i can't have a tent on my car for extended periods of time then yeah that's going to make it tricky for you so i would say that this is for the avid camper the person who's camping all season long who's really going to get use out of it or it's for the person who values convenience over everything else. Like if you don't wanna deal with setting up tents or breaking down tents and you just wanna be able to road trip and camp in your car anywhere that you stop, then yeah, this is definitely for you. So yeah, I hope that maybe that helped somebody who's on the fence or wanted just a closer look at this tent. Roof Nest hasn't asked me to say any of these things about it. So these are just my honest thoughts and I hope they helped someone. Just finished flying my drone a little bit. This is such a cool spot to fly a drone and the sun has just dipped behind that mountain. I knew I was gonna lose it early, so I'm glad I got my drone up before it went away. getting ready to cook some dinner. I talked about this, I think in my last camping video that I did, but it was so good. I specifically went looking for this today. This is the easiest lazy camping dinner that you can make. You just toss this in a skillet, cook it up. I've got some tortillas to wrap it up in and it's absolutely delicious. So that's what I'm making. You guys, that is the moon over there on the horizon and this doesn't even do it justice. It looks enormous. I cannot get over how that moon is looking tonight. I have my camp pretty much all set up for bed. I have a couple of these white lanterns. I also brought my aperture um, hue light, which is kind of a fun light to have out here. Um, I have a couple of these white lanterns and I think I might leave them on and like buy my tires, like one there and one here, but it is super dark if I have absolutely nothing lit up here. Like you would never know that I'm here. And these are LED lanterns, so they last like a thousand hours or something. Like they won't die if I leave them on. So maybe I'll do that and then I'll also have a light. If I have to get down to go to the bathroom, I'll have a light right there. Okay, I'm all set up in the tent for the night. I got the light strip up there plugged into my little battery pack and that it worked perfectly. I just had a really nice time for like the last hour. I just sat in one of those chairs in the dark. I wish I could convey through the camera how it felt to sit in the dark in the middle of the desert on a warm night. It's like 75 degrees, maybe 80 degrees, like a warm, hot breeze. I can't even put into words how almost just intoxicating it was. And as I was sitting there in that chair, it kind of reconfirmed something that I've learned about myself in the past few years and it's that I feel so at home in the desert. I feel so confident in the desert. Like whenever I have gone camping in the woods, it's not that I'm afraid of camping in the woods. I've Obviously if I was afraid I wouldn't go do it, but 
when it gets dark in the woods and I'm camping, every noise that I hear, I'm like, what is that? Is that a bear? Is that someone lurking behind a tree? I'm definitely more nervous when I'm camping in the woods. I don't feel like as just confident, calm, serene. I don't know what it is, but when I'm in the desert and I can see in every direction, there's no trees for things to be hiding behind. I feel so at peace. And it's interesting because I have spent the majority of my life living in the Pacific Northwest, which is lots of trees and not a lot of desert. So it's not like I grew up in the desert. So that's like why I feel at home there. It's interesting the things that you learn about yourself as you get older. I'm going to go to bed now and I will see you guys in the morning. So there is the view of the sunrise about to come up. And over on this side, we can still see the moon over there, not quite dipped yet. Good morning from complete solitude. It is so peaceful out here. So I think my plan for this morning, I'm just gonna make some coffee and get on the road. I think the trick with camping somewhere like this is you want to avoid the midday scorch. So like, especially right now, since it's June, it gets dark at like nine o'clock at night. So you can show up at 5 p.m., set up camp, cook dinner, and then you probably wanna be out by like, 10 a.m. the next morning, 9 a.m., um, just so you avoid those super hot hours because otherwise it's so pleasant. I would guess like 68 degrees this morning here. There's like a little bit of a breeze. It was really nice last night. I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Thanks for coming along with me as always, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.